Good evening, everyone. If everyone can take their seats, we'll get started here. The City Council meeting of April 18, 2011 will now come to order. Please turn off all cell phones for the duration of the meeting. Will the City Clerk please call the roll? Okay, hey, thank you. Council is reminded to please, uh, your, your uh, buttons should be flashing that shows that you're at, uh, here. So when I call your name, uh, when you state that you are present, please press your flashing button. Mayor Natal. Mayor Pro Tem Snyder. Here. Councilman Moreno. Here. Councilman Benson. Here. Councilwoman Carson. Here. Councilwoman Teeter. Here. Councilman Johnson. Here. Councilman McEldown. Here. And Councilman Bullock. Yeah. Mayor Pro Tem Snyder, you have a quorum. Thank you, ma'am. Will the audience please rise for a moment of silence and then join us in reciting the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. At this time, the city staff will pass around a microphone, and council invites everyone in the audience to please introduce yourselves. Larry Quintana. Jean Leffel. Joy Bishop. Ellen Haug, Carolyn Keith, Parks and Recreation, Lynn Hallowell, City Manager's Office, DJ Grimes, G&K Machine Company, John Howard, Information Technology, Michelle Hill, Economic Development, Doug Breeze with Charlotte's Web. Bill Baca, Chief of Police. Brittany Morris, Director of Economic Development. Thank you. Is that everyone? Okay. Thank you all. So the first thing that we have on is the proclamation, and that is for Tree City, USA. So I will read the proclamation and then look for a motion as soon as I finish with it. So, whereas the City of Commerce City desires to recognize and observe the special day known as Arbor Day, along with others across the nation and throughout the world, and whereas the City of Commerce City has been recognized as Tree City, USA by the National Arbor Day Foundation for the 20th consecutive year and desires to retain this designation, and whereas the city staff and city council wish to promote an interest in planting of trees in residential areas, as well as in city-owned parks, trails, and open space, and whereas trees in our city increase property values, enhance the economic vitality of business areas, and beautify our community, and whereas in furtherance of this desire, the city has instituted programs to assist its citizens in caring for their trees, shrubs, thus promoting a better ecological climate in the city. Now, therefore, I, Tracy Snyder, Mayor Pro Tem of the City of Commerce City, Colorado, do hereby proclaim April 30th, 2011, as Arbor Day in Commerce City. And I urge all citizens to support efforts to care for our trees and woodlands and to support our city's community forestry program. Further proclaim it in the best interest of all citizens of Commerce City to take part in the Arbor Day celebration to be held at Veterans Memorial Park at 9.30 in the morning on April 30th. Thank you very much. Councilman McEldowney. Move to approve the resolution. Thank you, sir. Councilman Moreno. Second the motion. Thank you. It's been moved and seconded to approve the proclamation. May I have a voice vote, please? 
All those in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. All those opposed? Thank you very much. The proclamation is passed. There were two public comment rosters made available at the table entrance to the council chambers for those who wish to address the council. This evening we have no one on the sign-up sheet. So since we don't have anyone, we'll go ahead and move into the approval of minutes. There's one set of minutes before the council this evening for approval. They are the minutes of the meeting of March 7, 2011. Councilwoman Teeter. Yes, move the approval of the minutes for the regular meeting March 7, 2011. Thank you. Councilman McEldowney. Second. Thank you, sir. I have a motion and a second to approve the meeting of March 7, 2000. I'm sorry, the minutes of the meeting of March 7, 2011. Is there any discussion? Okay. I'll please have a voice vote. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. All those opposed? Okay. The motion carries. Moving on to the consent agenda, there is one item on the consent agenda this evening. Council is reminded that this item can be removed from the consent agenda for discussion purposes at the request of a council member. Does anyone wish to remove this item from the consent agenda? If not, I am um, open to a, a motion. Councilman McEldowney? Move to approve the consent agenda. Thank you, sir. Can I have a second? Councilwoman Carson? Thank you, ma'am. <laughs> it has been moved and seconded to approve the consent agenda. Will the city attorney please read the title? Title reads, an ordinance amending various sections of the land development code. Okay. May I have a roll call vote, please? One moment. <clears throat> Go ahead. Oh, we got it twice. Hmm. Motion passes eight to zero. Okay, next we have resolutions. There are five resolutions that were not included in the consent agenda because they do require a separate voice vote. They are all the result of City Council's programs for business incentives. Is there anyone in the audience who wishes to address the Council on any of these resolutions? Seeing none, is there any discussion by City Council? Do you have discussion, Kelly? Okay. The first is Resolution 2011-17, a resolution approving business incentives for High Mesa Investments, LLC. Councilwoman Teeter. Yes, move to approve Resolution 2011-17. Thank you, ma'am. Councilman Moreno. Uh, second the motion, and I actually have a request, if I may. Sure. Um, if um, for each resolution, if maybe Brittany or staff member can just say something briefly about, because I think this is really a program we should be very proud of, and for the benefit of the people at home, um, they should know, you know, the good the good work that this program is doing. I appreciate that. Would uh, Economic Development Director Brittany Morris step forward? Thank you, ma'am. Brittany Morris, Director of Economic Development, thank you for the opportunity to speak about tonight's resolutions and uh, approval of incentives tonight. I am going to call up Michelle Hill from my office, Economic Development Specialist. She has become our unofficial program administrator for the incentive program, and she is going to go through each of the incentives proposed to you tonight, if that is okay. Okay, great. Thank you. Good evening, Michelle. How are you? Good evening. Thank you, Mayor Pro Tem, Council Members. Um, regarding resolution 2011-17 for High Mesa Investments, this company recently purchased the property located at um, 5465 Quebec Street and remodeled it so it could be used for two commercial units. The total capital investment was $125,000. And per the program, they'll receive a 10% rebate of the sales and use tax associated with that capital investment, as well as a 50% rebate of the building permit fees associated with that capital investment. The total of the incentive is $1,681 estimated, and that is actually um, reviewed and approved by finance after audit. Are there any questions? Are there any questions for any, any questions? No? Okay. Thank you very much, Michelle. I appreciate that. It has been moved and seconded to approve. Yeah. I believe. Do, do we, um, well, I guess this is a city attorney question. You could do that either of two ways. Okay. You can hear from uh, economic development to explain each one. Mm -hmm. 
And then at the conclusion of the explanation, then you can have your vote on it. Now, what, there was a motion on the floor. Was mm -hmm. there a second to that? There was. Mm -hmm. Okay. I, I, at this point, I'd request then, if you want to hear the explanations first, which is probably more expeditious, then ask the uh, maker of the motion to withdraw and the second to withdraw at this time and then make the motions for each of the resolution following the explanation. I withdraw my motion till explanations taken place. That's fine with me as well. Okay, go ahead and proceed, Michelle. Thank you. Thank you. The second resolution we're bringing before you tonight is resolution 2011-18, approving business incentives for CW LLC. CW LLC is Charlotte's Web Restaurant and Lounge, and in the audience tonight we do have Doug Brees, who's the owner of that business with us. So Doug, thank you for coming tonight. The business is planning to make capital investments up to about $60,000 is the estimate. Some of their improvements will include a remodel and improvement for carpet, lighting, repair of their existing coolers, upgrade of the sound system and security systems. Um, under this program, the business is eligible for three of the categories of business incentives. The first is the existing business incentive, which again is a 10% rebate of the sales and use tax associated with the capital investment, as well as a 50% rebate of the building fees associated with that capital investment. The second is job creation incentives. The company um, proposes to create four jobs, um, full-time equivalent jobs, and for that um, they will are eligible for $1,000 incentive. The final is the existing retailer incentive, and that is a 5% rebate of the sales tax um, collected and remitted to the city during 2010, and that 5% needs to be used for marketing the business. The total of the existing business incentive and the job creation incentive is $1,616. The existing retailer incentive is actually based off of proprietary information from their tax returns and therefore is not disclosable, um, but will be determined by the finance division at a later date. Are there any questions on this resolution? Yes, sir. Councilman Bullock. Absolutely, and I'm sorry, I do have that information. Charlotte's Web is located at 5271 East 52nd Avenue. <laughs> Good to know. Any other questions? Thank okay. you. The next resolution is Resolution 2011-19, approving business incentives for Direct Truck Shop Incorporated. They're located at 5590 East 55th Avenue. This company is planning facility improvements estimated at $81,263, and they're planning to replace an interior wall, new heating system, and replace lights with high efficiency bulbs and ballasts. Again, they're eligible for the existing business incentives with a 10% rebate of the sales and use tax associated with the capital investment and 50% of the building fees. The total of this estimated incentive is $887. Any questions, please? I'm sorry? No, unfortunately, we're not able to attend tonight. No, no, where are you located? I'm sorry, they're located at um, 5590 East 55th Avenue. Mm -hmm. Okay, thanks. The next resolution is for G&K Machine Company, and tonight we do have DJ, DJ Grimes in the audience with us. So DJ, thank you very much for attending. This business is moving into Commerce City, a portion of their operations. They're gonna be located at 4833 Newport Street. The company has been in operation since 1961, but they are new in moving some of their operations into Commerce City. They're a manufacturing company that specializes in gear manufacturing, machining, and repair requirements for the underground mining industry. They're planning facility improvements, estimated up to about $300,000. They are still working to get bids on this, but they will include an upgrade in electrical service, construction of new offices, new electrical to all the machines and equipment, as well as a new entrance to the building off of 48th Street. Again, they are eligible for the existing business incentive and the job creation incentive. They plan to create three jobs, one paying over the county average and two under the county average. The total of their existing business incentives and job creation incentives is 3,000, estimated to be $3,374. Any questions, please? 
And seeing them, thanks. The final incentive tonight is resolution 2011-21. And this is approving existing retailer incentives for Buy the Rockies LLC. Buy the Rockies LLC is the franchisee for Carl's Jr. located at 5998 Dahlia Street. Um, and again, this is the category of incentives that we're not allowed to disclose the amount because it is pulled directly from the tax return information. That will be determined by the Finance Division at a later time. So are there any questions on this resolution? Does anyone have any questions? Seeing none. Okay. Great. Thank you very Thank much. You very I appreciate much. that, Michelle. Thank you. Okay. So going back to the beginning, um, Councilwoman Teeter. Move to approve resolution 2011-17. Thank you. Councilman Moreno. Second the motion. Thank you. It has been moved and seconded to approve resolution 2011-17. Will the city attorney please read the title? <clears throat> title of resolution 2011-17 reads, Resolution Approving Business Incentive for High Mesa Investments, LLC. Thank you, sir. I'll have a voice vote, please. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed? Okay. Thank you very much. Resolution 2011-17 passes. Next is Resolution 2011-18, a resolution approving business incentives for CW LLC. Councilman McEldowney. Move to approve. Thank you, sir. Councilman Johnson. Second the motion. Thank you. It's been moved and seconded to approve Resolution 2011-18. Will the city attorney please read the title? Title of Resolution 2011-18 reads, Resolution Approving Business Incentive for CW LLC. Thank you, sir. May I have a voice vote, please? All those in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. All those opposed? Thank you. Resolution 2011-18 passes. Next resolution is 2011-19, a resolution approving business incentives for direct truck stop LLC. Councilman Bullock. Move to approve resolution 2011-19. Thank you, sir. Councilman Moreno. Second the motion. Thank you. It's been moved and seconded to approve Resolution 2011-19. Will the City Attorney please read the title? Title of Resolution 2011-19 reads, Resolution Approving Business Incentive for Direct Trucks Shop, Inc. Thank you. May I have a voice vote, please? All those in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. All those opposed? Thank you. Resolution 2011-19 passes. Next is Resolution 2011-20, a resolution approving business incentive for G&K Machine Company. Councilman McEldowney. Move to approve Resolution 2011-20. Thank you, sir. Councilman Bullock. Second the motion. It has been moved and seconded to approve Resolution 2011-20. Will the City Attorney please read the title? Title of Resolution 2011-20 reads, Resolution Approving Business Incentive for G&K Machine Company. Thank you, sir. May I have a voice vote, please? All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed? Resolution 2011-20 passes. Next is Resolution 2011-21, a resolution approving business incentive for By the Rockies, LLC. Councilwoman Carson. Motion to approve Resolution 2011-21. Thank you. Councilwoman Teeter. Second the motion. Thank you. It has been moved and seconded to approve Resolution 2011-21. Will the City Attorney please read the title? Title of Resolution 2011-21 reads, Resolution Approving Business Incentive for By the Rockies, LLC. Thank you, sir. May I have a voice vote, please? All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed? Resolution 2011-21 passes. Thank you. Um, Ms. Morris? Thank you, Mayor Pro Tem Snyder. I just wanted to quickly remind everyone that our incentive program does expire June 1st, 2011. While my division and city management will be reviewing the incentive program and its results in the month of June, it is very and providing recommendations to council for the future of the program. I highly recommend that if you are a resident, if you are an existing business, uh, home builder, or a prospective business in one of our target industries to get your application in by June first. Thank you. I appreciate that and that is good words of advice. Thank you, Ms. Morris. 
Okay, ordinance is on first reading. There is one ordinance on first reading. It is Ordinance 1859, an ordinance amending the Ordinance 1761 of the Ordinances of the City of Commerce City relative to amendment of description of the boundaries of Ward 3 in the City of Commerce City. Is there anyone in the audience who wishes to address the Council on this or ordinance? If not, is there any discussion by Council? I see a few people on the board. Are you on for the resolution or, I mean, for the motion? Or are you on for questions? Question? Okay, go ahead, Councilman Carson. Um, I just thought that we should note um, to everybody out there listening, as Mr. Gaylor explained to me, <laughs> um, if you want to do the explanation, I would love it. Okay. Uh, this, this ordinance comes about because a, a goal of the city is to assure that the boundaries of the city coexist with the boundaries of the wards so that we don't have an area in the city that is not in any ward. So, Well, as a result of uh, annexations, the boundaries of the city, of course, change, and therefore the boundaries of the ward stay as they were originally adopted unless you make an amendment to those boundaries. And this ordinance before you tonight then updates the boundaries of, of all the, uh, of the ward. It happens to be Ward 3 in this case to make it exactly the same as the boundaries of the city. Uh, several of the instances where the boundaries of the ward were changed, uh, come about because of the change in, uh, roadway alignment. Uh, where the old boundary uh, description was based upon a roadway that then we changed the uh, alignment on that roadway. That's one example. Another example is on an annexation that took place uh, when uh, subsequent to when the ward boundaries were originally drawn or last drawn. And a good example of that is with the uh, flea market property on 88th Avenue. And this ordinance then brings up to date the boundaries of the ward so that the boundaries of the ward coexist equally with the boundaries of the city of Commerce City. Thank you. Um, Mr. Moreno, did you have a question or? I do have a question. Okay. Um, this would most likely be a question for Mr. Gaylor or mm -hmm. Ms. Bauer. Um, the ward boundaries, um, there's a, uh, requirement in our charter, I believe, to uh, that they have to be um, con congruent in terms of population. Uh, there's no requirement, though, in terms of the size of a ward, is there? Um, no. It's just population. It's on population. And I might add, which I didn't indicate in my earlier explanation, these, uh, this, this ordinance that's changing the ward boundaries for Ward 3 does not include any voters. No residences are included in these ward boundaries changes. They're all either commercial or just vacant land. Thank you for the explanation. Anyone else have anything? Okay. Yes. I'm sorry, Councilman Benson. <clears throat> now, Mr. Gator, it looks like this is just what we annexed in that 1,200 acre annexation plus the uh, flea market that, that's really what we're doing here we're just bringing that that annexed land into ward three right we are bringing that in although it doesn't include the 12 the 1200 acres uh, are not part of this annexation well, that's right it would the 1200 acres would have been next to highway two but you're you're exactly right though as far as the purpose of what this ordinance is doing it takes into account any annexations that have occurred since the last drawing of the ward boundaries. Well, now I understand what you mean when you say there's no residents, because I know there were a few residents of uh, the 1,200 acres that we annexed. Is it possible to get this up on the, the screen? We can uh, have uh, uh, the city clerk can uh, engage the uh, map camera for me, and I can point out the uh, the specific areas. Okay. Hold on, Bob. Uh, 
Yeah. I gotta find it, Bob. Hang on. Here we go. Okay. It's gonna take a moment. Let me zoom in. Other way, Bob. <laughs> Other way around. Upside down. There you go. There you go. That looks good. It's only the red that's being... Yeah. To help you get oriented here, it is the red, but bear in mind, in the legal description uh, in the ordinance, it excludes out any areas that are not incorporated in the city. So when you read through that legal description, uh, you're going to follow what that red area indicates there. But there are areas in that red area that are not in the city and therefore are not part of the amendment to the ward boundaries. But because those areas are, are so small and isolated, it was difficult to actually indicate just in red those, those areas. So what we've done is followed the river along, along the uh, uh, document here. As you see here, this is the uh, the boundary, the river, but all of that in red is not in the city of Commerce City. Uh, the part that's not in the city of Commerce City has been excluded in the uh, in the ordinance description to say excluded from the ward boundaries or any areas that are not in the city. For example, to give you an indication of. Uh, the complication that if we tried to track every little nick and corner of the of the change, we have an area in the center, right in this area, that is in the city of Commerce City, but it it's an island because that's the area. Some of you may be familiar with those uh, uh, <coughs> ponds of water that were de-annexed and. Uh, annexed to the city of Thornton because they were part of Thornton's water supply. And when, it, when those ponds of water were de-annexed, it left a tract of land that amounts to an island in the city of Commerce City because we didn't annex land or de-annex land. We just de-annexed the ponds of water. Well, that left this area right here in the city of Commerce City that's an island and it's land. But as you can see, it would be difficult to draw that as a ward boundary when uh, it's an island. So what we've done is just track the whole growth area for Commerce City along the river and then say excluding any areas that are not annexed to the city of Commerce City. So that's one example. Another example is this little hump here that you see right here. That is now in the city of Commerce City, but the original uh, ward boundary uh, ordinance uh, did not include that because that area was annexed to the city of Commerce City since the ward boundary was originally uh, changed. Uh, when the annexation took place. And then we have another little area down here uh, where there was an annexation that took place and the, uh, the uh, alignment of the street changed right here. And those areas are in the city of Commerce City. But originally, if you see this heavy line right here, that's Colorado Boulevard. Well, originally, the line was drawn uh, to say following Colorado Boulevard, but then as you can see, Colorado Boulevard alignment was changed to here. Well, that left out this little sliver from the, uh, from the ward boundary. So this ordinance now takes into account this little triangular piece here. And those are just examples of the detail that we had to go into in order to bring the ward boundaries uh, to make them coexistent with the existing boundaries of the city of Commerce City. 
Any questions? Any questions from anyone? Thank you, sir, for that explanation. Appreciate that. Councilman Moreno. I do have a, a quick question. Um, you know, obviously there are requirements that either residents or businesses um, have to subscribe to when they are annexed into the city. There is no additional requirement when they're annexed into a ward or receive a ward designation, correct? I mean, other than calling Councilwoman Carson with their complaints. Yeah. Right, exactly. Uh, because including an area in a ward boundary is just part of a adoption of an ordinance and it's published so if anybody has any questions or objections to it they can be heard here at this at this proceeding but uh, that really only occurs that I in my experience when there are voters that are affected and they're changed their ward has been changed or something of that nature that would indicate a change of council representation, they would, might be concerned about that, obviously. But when there aren't any voters involved in it, it it's pretty much a, a, of a routine change by the council just as a housekeeping measure. Well, it looks like you're off the hook this time, Councilwoman Carson. <laughs> Anyone else? Councilwoman McEldowney? I was prepared to make a motion. Go ahead, sir. would like to introduce uh, Ordinance 1859 on first reading. Council is seated. Thank you. Councilwoman Carson. Thank you. It has been moved and seconded to approve Ordinance 1859 on first reading. Will the city attorney please read the title? Title of Ordinance 1859 reads, An Ordinance Amending Ordinance 1761 of the Ordinances of the City of Commerce City relative to amendment of the description of the boundaries of Ward 3 in the City of Commerce City. Thank you, sir. May I have a roll call vote, please? Looks like we have eight to zero. The ordinance passes on first reading. On to administrative council business. Does anyone have any? Councilman Bullock. Yes, uh, I have two things tonight. And um, the first thing is in regarding the flea market. Um, I have received calls. This is my second time that it's nice and the people that live around the flea market cannot access 88th Avenue. Uh, in the agreement that we uh, put forth, we're supposed to be assigning our officers out there that the flea, the flea market pays for to direct traffic. And there have been no officers out there at any time to do any direction of traffic. And um, the people that live off of Laurel Drive say that they're putting their life in their hands trying to get off their street just to get onto it. Plus, there are people driving on the inside right lane that will drive up that don't like waiting, and then they wait the last minute to get over in the left lane to try and turn in front of someone else that's been waiting to turn and everything. So we definitely need to get our officers or either Adams County or somebody out there to have direction of traffic and if the weather's nice, you can count on it being busy uh, the whole time. Thank you. The second one is on April 23rd at 10.30 in the morning. They're going to do um, a, a presentation for Sarah Union, a bench and tree dedication. Um, it the, um, it's called the um, uh, Pepper Ripe Pine, Re okay. Grove, uh, say it for me right there, uh, Tom. It's the pepper riparian area of Sarah's Grove. Right. And um, the, um, huh? It's, uh, yeah, by the Dahlia Trailhead. If you park at the Dahlia Trailhead and then walk west under the bridge, mm -hmm. it's about a half a mile down the road and you can't miss it. So, And they would like to have as many people there as possible. Um, it's. Uh, it's been since October, uh, 97 is when um, Sarah got uh, killed in a car accident. And they're 
just would like, uh, I've already committed to be in there, and so as many council people can be there Saturday morning at 1030. And, yes, ma'am. Okay. And those are my two administrative things. Okay. Councilman Benson, did you ask where the event was? Okay. He's wondering what where it's going to be, Councilman Bullock. Okay. If you, um, wow, you don't know what a Dahlia Trailhead is, parking area on Sand Creek, right as you get there and turn off a of Sand Creek Drive, the first parking area you see down there right next to 270 is a Dahlia Trailhead. After you park there and you walk down to the trail, turn right and go under the bridge and just keep walking until you see all the people. I guess it would be possible to ride your bicycle. It's right possible there. to ride your bicycle there and you can't miss it. Okay. Thank you. Did you have anything else, Mr. Bullock? No, ma'am. Not on that. Just on reports later. Okay. Thank you. Uh, Councilwoman Teeter. Yes, Mr. Aker, can you give me the status on the joint meeting that I requested to be held with Commerce City, Brighton, and Thornton? Our staff is going to be working to get that set up in the next few months and get a couple of dates and get back with the council. Yeah, it would be nice to have it at Buffalo Run in the late spring or summer to showcase that area. And you're, just so I'm clear, a separate meeting with Brighton, or mm -hmm. do you want it all three? All three. Okay. That's all I have. Thank you. Okay, Councilwoman Carson. Um, I had spoken with a family that lives at 15800 East 121st Avenue, uh, quite concerned with the traffic noise. I guess there's an app you can put on your phone to uh, do the decibels of, of a level of noise. I didn't wow. know you could do that, but they said <laughs> theirs came in at a 70. So um, she says that all the truck traffic and everything is is feeded beyond I, their, their condominiums right there. So can we check that out? One five eight zero zero East one hundred and twenty first Avenue. Thank you. Thank you, Councilwoman Carson. Councilman McEldowney. I had a. Uh make use of the new open space along Second Creek quite a bit. Um, I actually had occasion to be driving down 104th over the weekend and uh, saw what looked like a, a dirt bike or a three-wheeler um, operating on the, the Crusher Finds trail. Um, I thought better of trying to play policeman myself and kept going and decided not to call 911. I thought I would bring it to, uh, to Chief's attention tonight. I, I can't recall if we have specifically posted at each of those entry points that it's not no motorized vehicles allowed. Um, I mean, if, if I were 15 and had a dirt bike, it would be a dream to go ride there. <laughs> um, but it's obviously rather destructive to those trails. Um, so I don't know if we can, A, look at uh, making sure the signage is clear. Uh, but B, I don't know. It's not we're going to have somebody uh, patrol that area. But I um, just wanted to bring it to the, uh, to the chief's attention. So thanks. Oh, and, and just while I'm on the subject of the open space, the new shade covers and the drinking fountains look phenomenal. So really come, come a long way. Thank you, sir. Councilwoman Teeter. Yes, and I'd forgotten one other thing. Mr. Aker, last week uh, Max Martinez and his family were here requesting speed bumps and the uh, security camera. Has anybody been in contact with them on this? I'll let, I'll let Mr. McBroom handle that. And then, in addition, I got a call from um, representative of the school district. They had similar concerns voiced at the school district meeting, and we're trying to work together to have a common uh, response as well. Okay. Thank you. It's my understanding uh, Mr. Clements has been in touch with the Martinez family. It's also my understanding that uh, traffic congestion in that area has been studied in the past, so Public Works is pulling together that background information to see uh, what we've studied in the past and see if those are the same issues that we're having currently. Okay, thank you. Councilman Benson. What's the prognosis for 96 and Highway 2? I mean, what's the time frame on that?
I don't know the answer to that question, but we can absolutely get you a status report in your packet for next week's meeting. Okay. Mr. Benson, the sign says August, but Mr. Clements told me it should be completed before then because we've had such nice weather. Sure. Well, that's what I was looking for. <laughs> and I know that, that August is the outside day, but, uh, you know, just Anything a couple Anything sooner months, would okay. be great, right? <laughs> Thank you. Does anyone else have any administrative business? I just have one thing. Um, the Women in Municipal Government is going to be having their conference in Missouri um, from about the 30th to the 3rd. Um, and so, unfortunately, I would be going to Public Safety Crime Prevention Steering Committee meeting, but it runs the same week as ICSC. So I will be going to ICSC. So um, I have been on the board of, with WIMIC for a very long time and was wondering if Council had any problem with me attending that conference. No? No problem. Okay, thank you, sir. And ma'am. <laughs> okay, moving on to the legislative. Um, Mr. Cordero, do you have a legislative update for us this evening? Thank you. Good evening, Madam Mayor Pro Tem and members of council. You have, except for perhaps uh, Councilman Moreno, I'll get you a copy at the end of the meeting. You should have a copy of my um, report and also the uh, legislative tracking sheet. Uh, just very quickly, we've had so far uh, about 539 bills introduced uh, in the, at the State Assembly. We don't expect a, a large number of bills to be introduced for the, re for the duration. Uh, there's only about uh, another month to go uh, till the end of the legislative session, which is uh, scheduled for May, Wednesday, May 11th. Um, in terms of current bills, we have 29 bills that we're actively tracking, and that's bills that we've taken a position either to monitor, support, or oppose. Five bills we support, 13 bills we oppose, and 11 bills uh, that we're monitoring. And 12 out of those bills that, uh, out of 23 bills that we're either monitoring or, or uh, opposing have uh, been postponed indefinitely so far. Uh, two more things that I wanted to cover. I wanted to give you a quick uh, number of bullets on the agreement that the, lit, that the State Assembly and the Governor's Office reached in terms of closing the budget gap for budget year, state budget year 2011-2012. Uh, Essentially, the, the main bill is uh, Senate Bill 209, but there are other bills that make uh, minor corrections. And uh, the, the essential um, po points or agreements they made, uh, they're maintaining a 4% reserve, uh, which is not a significant amount of reserves for the state, but uh, the governor feels strongly that we need to increase the state reserves in case uh, something happens. Um, uh, the budget uses more OSBP revenue forecast, so uh, conservative forecast, so they're trying uh, not to run into an issue where when, you know, the revenues do come in and they come in shorter than originally anticipated that they would have to make additional cuts. So they're using cons conservative uh, forecasts, hopefully by next year when the, when the 2012 uh, General Assembly meets, there won't be additional cuts to be made. Um, it restores uh, sales tax exemptions for agricultural products, also for software products and it re restores a vendor fee of 2.2% to vendors who collect, uh, collecting and, and remitting Colorado State sales tax to the state. And finally, it eliminates 750 state full-time equivalencies. Um, the, although there was general agreement upon, among the, the state assembly and the, the governor, it really took a lot of discussions uh, to get the, this bill through and to get it approved. Uh, and it, it actually came about, I think it was something like um, eight days late, almost 10 days late than it should have been. Um, and the last item that I wanted to point out to you was the committee that was appointed by the, the um, State House of Representatives and the State Senate to do redistricting had its first hearing where they presented um, draft maps uh, they presented a total of uh, 11 maps. Out of the 11 maps, 
six maps uh, pl uh, proposed that Commerce City be placed within uh, Congressional District 6, which is right now the, 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 rep the congressman is Congressman Mike Kaufman. And uh, the other five uh, uh, maps uh, leave Commerce City in, within uh, its current place, which is uh, Congressional District 7. I gave you a little bit more information there about how the session played out. Mm -hmm. It wasn't pretty. Once <laughs> all the once all the maps were um, presented, you know, basically they went back to the business of politics, and so. Uh, I anticipate it will be going this way for the next couple of weeks. Um, I, I heard don't it was have pretty a very ugly. <laughs> I'm sorry? I heard it was pretty ugly. It was. It That's really was. And it, and it spilled outside of the hearing afterwards. So um, the I don't really have a, a very good sense right now. I might have some more information for you next week on whether or not we're going to see some kind of agreement by the end of the session. But. This has to be worked out by the end of the session. Otherwise, it goes to the state Supreme Court in terms oh. of the congressional districts. I do have a question for you on that real quick. So yes. it has to be resolved before the end of the session or it goes to court. And is that for not just the congressional districts, but all of the districts, the House and the Senate districts? No, that's another process altogether. And can you tell me a little bit about that and where we're at with that? Do you know? And when um, we might expect to have some answers on that? We'll have a lot more information for you on that in the summer because um, there there is a process uh, and it's it's sequential, uh, whereby the Supreme Court, I'm um, sorry, the the governor appoints a couple of members of the commission, then the state house appoints folks, the state senate, and then the Supreme Court, and they have to do it in that order. But the commission that will look at the state and Senate districts here in Colorado, mm -hmm. they will not get going until uh, the summer. And I may be mis misspeaking because I didn't prepare for that too well, but I'll, I will get you that information, the okay. certain information. I was heard about I yeah. heard about June is when they would start looking at it, but I didn't know that's if that was for sure. That's when they'll get started, yes. Okay, that's what I heard. Okay. All right. Thank you. Does anyone else have any questions? Uh, Councilwoman Teeter? Yes. Good evening, and thank you for your presentation. Last week, Senate Bill 233 failed because of lack of votes. That was uh, the bill that would allow slot machines to be placed in horse tracks. Have you heard if it's going to be um, coming forward again for another attempt on that? You're talking about last week or last year? Last, last week. Last week. Um, I, I, don't, I have not heard that there is another bill uh, to include some kind of video gaming at racetracks. And that bill, that, that bill, by the way, did not impact Commerce City. No, it, it didn't. It was the horse track in Arapahoe County, which um, they opposed it along with um, uh, Aurora City Council. Yeah. So if you hear anything, can you give me a call on that, please? For sure. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Councilman Bullock? Um, my question is, you say it got ugly. Did it get ugly to the fact on both six and seven, or just the maps for six? Oh, I'm sorry, Councilman Bullock. What I meant by it got ugly was once both sides, if you will, the, the Republican um, part of the committee, get, uh, first pre they presented their, their um, maps first, and those are maps uh, you have the list there, and when I send you this electronically, you'll be able to click on those and see the actual map. Those are maps, Balmer map 1, Balmer map 2, McNulty map A, B, and C. Those are the Republican uh, maps. And then, then after that, the, 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 the Democrats uh, presented their maps, and that was city integrity from 1 through 6. So once they were done, then what I meant by it got ugly was that one side then took the floor and started accusing the other one of trying to manipulate the boundaries in the maps so that the opposite party would have less votes. And uh, that's about it. One other thing that you just reminded me of, though, that I would like to add is that Congressman Rowley Heath, 
-hmm. as he presented the city integrity maps one through six, at one point he mentioned Commerce City. It was in city integrity number one. And he says that he listened to all of you who spoke at the meeting in Lakewood and that he heard your concerns about wanting to keep the city intact. That's what he heard. He didn't hear intact plus in District 7. And I just wanted to, I just wanted to point that out to you. Oh. And my last message to you is we can talk after the meeting if you like, but perhaps there is more outreach that can be done to this committee that they need to know exactly what your wishes are. Um, because there's still going to be a lot of conversations around this. Bless you. Th bless you. Well, that's interesting. So the city is kept intact no matter what. I guess that's, that's a, that could be a relief. Um, but there is a significant difference between the proposed District 6 and District 7. Right. Would a resolution be in line for this council to do to favor which which way we would go? Uh, I would have to think about that and look into that a little bit Let more before I answer your question, yeah. Councilman Johns. Let us know. Councilman Bullock, are you finished? Yeah, yes. Councilman Moreno. Well, they have gave us what we wanted. Uh, we're not in the, we won't, there no proposal puts us in the first congressional. Uh, <laughs> that was we the also other thing, yeah. may not be staying in the seventh. Um, it, it's a very interesting process, and uh, uh, I, I would love to say more, but uh, unfortunately, I, I probably shouldn't. So uh, thank you for your report, though. Anyone else? Thank you, Mr. Cordero. We appreciate your report. Okay. Regular reports now. We will go to City Attorney Gaylor. Excuse me. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. Uh -huh. Mayor Tim, I, I had another item of administrative business. I wanted to go to a work an E470 workshop in Dallas mid-May. Anybody have any objection to that? Mm -mm. Okay. No. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Benson. Okay, City Attorney Gaylor. I have nothing further to report this evening. Okay, thank you. Mr. Aker. We're back on. I'd just like to uh, thank council, those who were able to make it for coming early and uh, doing the little um, stint for the camera on carpooling to the Rapids match. Um, just to refresh, that will be um, aired during the match on Friday as part of the Rapids efforts for um, a green game as a part of upcoming Earth Day activities that will be happening later on in the month. And then also the green team, which is a staff team, taking a look at what um, activities and what things we can do as a city from a city facility. Um, we'll have a table there as well, kind of helping give out some information. So, again, thank you for uh, participating this evening for those who were able to. That was fun, but I have to admit I haven't run at all until that little piece of taping that we did. So a little painful, but it was fun. Councilwoman Teeter? Yes, Mr. Aker, unfortunately I won't be able to attend that on Friday. I'll be out of state. Would we be able to get a copy of that video? Would we? Thank you, Michelle. I see you shaking your head yes. Thank you. Mr. McBroom, did you have anything to add? Okay. Councilman Bullock. Yes. Um, the only thing I have, I have two items to report on um, Saturday I mean, on Friday the 22nd, uh, they were asking board of directors members on Sand Creek or anybody that would like to, we're having a volunteer day, and we're going to have about 120 volunteers from Johnson & Well University at I-70 and Quebec Street on the Sand Creek Trail to help with uh, cleaning up, cutting down Russian olive uh, trees, uh, putting sand around the base of other trees so the beavers don't eat them up and everything like that. It's just a volunteer day from um, 10 to 2, If the day you'll be out of town, Friday. Yes. So uh, if anyone would like to come and meet there from 10 to 2 on Friday, wear your uh, work clothes, and uh, it's right there on Quebec Street under, sand, uh, under the road, on the Sand Creek Trail from 10 to 2. 
Also, last week on um, Tuesday, they had a tour of the new visitor center out there at the uh, Wildlife Refuge. And you just don't know what's about to happen. That place is fantastic. It is large. It has auditoriums. It has work rooms and um, explore rooms where they can go in and do all sorts of things. And they're having a film fest in May, um, May 21st. I will tell you exactly. Um, it's two weekends in May. The first weekend is the 20th through the 22nd. And the second weekend is the 27th through the 29th. The first weekend, a lot of the people that are making the films will be there for it. The auditorium only holds 75 people, but it's going to be it's the first annual um, refuge uh, film fest, and while and it's an, it, it's going to be um, something else. So you will be receiving invitations in the near future. Be sure to RSVP early to get there and uh, try and make it the first weekend. <coughs> if not, they will be showing the same films on the second weekend. Thank you. Okay. Councilman McEldowney? Thank you. Councilman Johnson? No report. Thank you, sir. Councilwoman Teeter? Of course. Yes, I have one that Mr. Bullock forgot. He and I attended the Restoration Advisory Board meeting, and after decades of cleaning up and um, all the hazardous waste and everything, it's coming to an end. It's going to be dissolved, and our last regular meeting was last week, and it'll be finalized in July with the little gathering. Thank you. And Renee, how long did you stay on that? I've been 12 years, so you've had to have been longer than that. I've been on the Restoration Advisory Board since 97. Very good. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Councilman Moreno? Just want to um, quickly thank uh, the work of economic development and staff. Um, you know, we approved resolutions tonight that are going to mean more jobs for Commerce City, and they're going to be more businesses making investments in our city. Um, and I think that's something to brag about, especially in this economy. Um, so I really appreciate your work, and I think it's due to you, your work, and, and the foresight of this council uh, that we're in such a good place, uh, especially in the metro area among other cities. So thank you for your work. Um, and uh, just also want to report that uh, I will be headed to Seattle tomorrow. Um, City Manager Flannery as well as Mayor Natal are already there um, to attend a uh, Leadership Academy, National League of Cities Leadership Academy on uh, global competitive competitiveness um, for local communities. Uh, and I think this is something that is very much uh, going to matter uh, in the coming years. Uh, we live in a global society now, and that means global companies are looking to local communities to work with them to develop relationships so they can uh, do business here in the United States. So uh, I'm excited for that. I'll be out of town until Thursday, and I will uh, present a report when I get back. Um, Councilman Moreno, just a quick question. So as I understood it from talking to a few people, because I wasn't here that particular meeting that this came up, is that um, because um, Mayor Natal has kind of been, the, he actually has been the lead on the international side of things and bringing us into the international market. Um, as I understand it, the council selected you to go as a person that will, the baton would be passing on to, you know, once Mayor Natal leaves, that you would be the person that that international baton would be passed on to. Is that correct for the correct. future? Okay. Yeah, there, there was um, some concern on council about the um, longevity mm -hmm. of those relationships after, um, after the, the next election. Sure. Okay. Um, and so they asked me if I would, I would step in, and I, I agreed to. Okay. Um, and I'm excited to uh, continue those relationships. Okay, great. Thank you so much for that. Did you have anything else? Okay. Councilman Benson. Yes, thank you. Well, of course, last Thursday we had a kind of a, a pre-tour of the uh, uh, arsenal Wildlife Refuge uh, Visitor Center. It was very interesting. I think the grand opening is going to be sometime in the latter part of May. That'll be a, a good event to attend. On Friday, I uh, attended the State Transportation Advisory Committee um, meeting at, at CDOT. Um, there were a lot of things that were discussed, and most, most of those I'll just bring up at the Dr. Cog meeting on Wednesday night. But there are a couple of things that I think would be interesting, in, interesting to our people 
You know, we, we've heard that there were um, 128 bridges that were dangerous. And uh, I think you can add maybe another 23 to that at this point. They've taken care of the worst 10, but I don't know that we're keeping up as far as the bridges that go bad and what they're curing. But they're on top of it, and I guess the money when the money comes in, they're trying to repair the bridges as uh, needed. Also, with regard to our uh, this E-470 bump that they're trying to, they proposed, um, we had a discussion about the cost, and something that has bothered me from the very beginning is the difference in the cost between going with the existing alignment and the realignment where you have that little hump. And I know we kind of lost track of the figures, it seemed like. Uh, they were, it was about a $400 million, $500 million difference in the beginning. Then we went to some meetings where they had kind of gotten it down to where there wasn't that much of a difference. Well, this is last Friday. And what last Friday's documentation says is that the current alignment alternative would take $700 million to $900 million. The realignment alternative would take $1.48 billion to $1.78 or $1.4 billion to $1.7 billion. So that's a difference of at least, and we've got it in writing on something that was done last Friday, of at least $500 million dollars a half a billion dollars, and it could be as high as one billion dollars difference in going with that north alternative. Now, they said that uh, the lean is to go with the existing alignment. And of course, that would be the leanest alignment, because it would cost about a half a billion dollars less and I suggested that we have a highway out here called 270 that could use about 500 million dollars in uh, uh, repairs and expansions but uh, so I'm thinking I'm feeling a lot better about that issue now uh, than I have for the past year or so because it seems like something was about to happen there and I asked about the Purina issue um, and it looks like if there's going to be an expansion it would be to the north and so Purina would not be affected. But the, uh, the alternative that I'm hoping for is to expand I-70 to six lanes on each side with the uh, interior two lanes as hot lanes where you have to pay, and then the outside four lanes on each side would be general purpose lanes. So the hot lanes would take traffic out of the general purpose lanes. People would want to pay for it. They can go a little bit faster, but it, it helps everybody out because it takes traffic out of the general purpose lanes. But uh, these meetings are kind of like the Dr. Cog meetings. The learning curve is very steep, and uh, sometimes you don't understand everything that's going to happen. But on this issue, I understood everything, I think, that happened. Uh, and I've been asked by the chairman of Dr. Cog to become the member as opposed to the alternate of the St State Transportation Advisory Committee, and I told him I would do that, and I expect that's going to happen within the next week or two. So anyway, that, that's all of my report. Thank you. Thank you. Councilwoman Carson? Well, I'll keep it short, but uh, I also attended the uh, uh, private little tour of the visitor center out there at the refuge, and wow, what a beautiful spot it is out there. I can't wait to take my granddaughter out there. They've done such a great job with uh, all the hands-on learning for the children when they come out there will just be fabulous, and um, I, I just can't say enough about it. Then I also attended the um, Adams County Mayor and Commissioner's Youth Awards the other night, and all I can say is there were some recipients there, these young people who I cannot get off my mind, the things they have overcome, the challenges they have met. And so, uh, once again, just congratulations to all of them for the great job that they have done. And that's the end of my report. Thank you. I have just a couple of things. I'll try to get to them pretty quickly here. Um, I attended the ADCOG Executive Committee breakfast on Friday. We were the host and we had a really great turnout, about 35 mayors and county commissioners and a few others showed up to that and it was a great meeting. 
And um, I think that uh, there was some really good information that came out of it. We had a CML legislative update, which you know I thought was pretty pretty good. And then uh, we had an E-470, speaking of E-470, we had an E-470 um, speed and traffic enforcement update. And we were told that basically um, there's some talk about um, changing the speed limit, perhaps increasing it a little bit, so I know that's on their minds. And then also going from boxes to uh, a little sticker, it's about the size of a Band-Aid that would be in the window as opposed to the big kind of bulky box that they have right now. And they did report that traffic was up in 2009, 2010, and 2011. So um, from an economic development perspective, that's good news that traffic is up each year. So um, also had an, um, an update from the Northern Area Transportation Alliance. Um, they're working to build a successful um, resolution with RTD in terms of completing fast tracks. And um, the TMO, there was a lot of information about that. And I do have a current Dr. Cog financial constraint 2035 um, regional transportation plan paperwork here that I got. I brought it for all of you. If you want to look at it, I have it. You're certainly welcome to. Um, I think at some point in time, there'll probably need to be a resolution from the council um, when the application is there in support of the formation of the TMO. So at that point, I think we'll probably have more information to talk about, but I just wanted to update everyone on that meeting. Um, let's see. I attended the Mary Choncho dinner, um, which was on Thursday, I do believe, and that was really nice. Um, there was a very sweet 85-year-old gentleman that was the winner of that, and I wish I could remember his name. Do you know his name, Mr. Aker? Yes, it's Steve Austin. I've actually Thank had you. the pleasure of volunteering with him a couple of times. He was absolutely a darling sweet man with a, just a long, long history of community involvement and volunteerism, and he was just, it was an ama he was amazing and well-deserving of that award. So congratulations to him. Um, I also went to the mayor, uh, Metro Mayor and Commissioner's Youth Awards, and uh, Councilman Carson is right. That event is amazing. When you hear the stories of these young people and the struggles that they have gone through and the situations in their family and, I mean, it just all kinds of things that you would think that would really just, you know, I mean, just be life-altering things that would keep them from moving ahead. Instead, they turn them around and they make them a positive and they move forward with their lives and they go to college and they volunteer and they do just really amazing things. So I actually haven't stopped thinking about them either, so I know exactly what you're, what you're saying on that. Um, the visitor center is remarkable. Um, they are, anyone who wants to see it, you know, are certainly going to be available to do that here pretty quick. And, and they're just really moving along nicely out there. And it's just really exciting. Um, the last thing I wanted to say um, was something I said last week that I went home and thought about um, some. And I'd just like to comment on real briefly here is that we were discussing the Memorial Day Parade and the fact that it's always in the South. And Councilman Benson brought up that maybe, you know, it's, maybe sometime it would be in the Northern Range or maybe that would be a consideration. And I automatically said no, that, you know, it would be in the South. And the reason why I said that is because our Veterans Memorial is in the South, right next to the Rec Center. And it was recently renovated and um, people are able to buy bricks in honor of their loved ones that have served in the military. So that is traditionally where historically we have always had the parade. Um, but I think that to say that there would never be a parade of any kind in the North um, was an unfair thing to say. So I think that um, what it's really about in my mind is not rather not the parades in the North or the South, but we need to be all inclusive. And we really need to be thinking of ourselves as one big city. And no matter what we're doing, you know, the Memorial Day Parade, we need to make sure everyone in the entire city has information on when it's going to be, has opportunity to know what the theme is, to be invited to come and participate, to take part in it. And really, you know, I would like to see people from all over the city come and be involved so that when we do events like this, we don't feel north versus south or that we're not, you know, we just, we need to start thinking of ourselves as one big city and be all inclusive to everyone at all times. So I apologize if I offended anyone by saying that, but I just wanted to let everyone know that that was the reason I said that and that I realized that that probably wasn't a fair thing to say, but I think it's more about being all inclusive and making sure that we just all come together as one city to honor our veterans. So um, if there's no other business to come before the city, meeting is adjourned. Have a great evening and be safe, everyone.